Chapter 18 Then Paul left Athens and went to Corinth. There he became acquainted with a Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, who had recently arrived from Italy with his wife Priscilla. They had been expelled from Italy as a result of Claudius Caesar's order to deport all Jews from Rome. Paul lived and worked with them, for they were tent-makers, just as he was. Each Sabbath found Paul at the synagogue trying to convince the Jews and Greeks alike. And after Silas and Timothy came down from Macedonia, Paul spent his full time preaching and testifying to the Jews, telling them, The Messiah you are looking for is Jesus. But when the Jews opposed him and insulted him, Paul shook the dust from his robe and said, Your blood be upon your own heads. I am innocent. From now on I will go to the Gentiles. After that he stayed with Titius Justus, a Gentile who worshipped God and lived next door to the synagogue. Crispus, the leader of the synagogue, and all his household believed in the Lord. Many others in Corinth also became believers and were baptized. One night the Lord spoke to Paul in a vision and told him, Don't be afraid. Speak out. Don't be silent. For I am with you, and no one will harm you, because many people here in this city belong to me. So Paul stayed there for the next year and a half, teaching the word of God. But when Gallio became governor of Achaia, some Jews rose in concerted action against Paul and brought him before the governor for judgment. They accused Paul of persuading people to worship God in ways that are contrary to the law. But just as Paul started to make his defense, Gallio turned to Paul's accusers and said, Listen, you Jews! If this were a case involving some wrongdoing or a serious crime, I would be obliged to listen to you. But since it is merely a question of words and names and your Jewish laws, you take care of it. I refuse to judge such matters. And he drove them out of the courtroom. The mob had grabbed Sosthenes, the leader of the synagogue, and had beaten him right there in the courtroom. But Gallio paid no attention. Paul stayed in Corinth for some time after that, and then said goodbye to the brothers and sisters and sailed for the coast of Syria, taking Priscilla and Aquila with him. Earlier, at Sencria, Paul had shaved his head according to Jewish custom, for he had taken a vow. When they arrived at the port of Ephesus, Paul left the others behind. While he was there, he went to the synagogue to debate with the Jews. They asked him to stay longer, but he declined. So he left, saying, I will come back later, God willing. Then he set sail from Ephesus. The next stop was at the port of Caesarea. From there he went up and visited the church at Jerusalem and then went back to Antioch. After spending some time in Antioch, Paul went back to Galatia and Phrygia, visiting all the believers, encouraging them, and helping them to grow in the Lord. Meanwhile, a Jew named Apollos, an eloquent speaker who knew the Scriptures well, had just arrived in Ephesus from Alexandria in Egypt. He had been taught the way of the Lord and talked to others with great enthusiasm and accuracy about Jesus. However, he knew only about John's baptism. When Priscilla and Aquila heard him preaching boldly in the synagogue, they took him aside and explained the way of God more accurately. Apollos had been thinking about going to Achaia, and the brothers and sisters in Ephesus encouraged him in this. They wrote to the believers in Achaia, asking them to welcome him. When he arrived there, he proved to be of great benefit to those who, by God's grace, had believed. He refuted all the Jews with powerful arguments in public debate. Using the scriptures, he explained to them, The Messiah you are looking for is Jesus.